it's a new way to protect your email messages and more to make sure you're not a victim of so many cyber attacks that we're hearing about lately. And with me is the CEO, Alain Gahi, to give us an update on this. And I was telling you that I was kind of peripherally involved uh, with the ransomware attack this week. One of my TV clients was attacked and it's put them out of business for a couple of days already. Um, so these are just becoming more common. Uh, what are your thoughts on where ransomware is right now? Is it getting worse? Uh, yes, hi, Jane, and hi to anyone who's watching us. So ransomware has been around for a while, and now they have this uh, snapware or snap ransomware, which is basically the express version, I like to call it, of the traditional ransomware, where a hacker would come, steal a huge database, then render it public, embarrass the company or the government authority, like plenty of them are being hacked now. And basically, this is a quick and dirty express way to steal only the valuable data of a company and then tell the company, hey, we have your data, you have like 24 hours to pay up or it's gonna go to the public. Uh, that happens a lot. And a lot of time, the way they get in, there was an article uh, recently that I looked at and the way they get in is through VPN. So, you know, VPNs are okay if you wanna watch the Italian soccer game and you're in Dallas and you don't have the Italian TV and you kind of go through these you know, multi-jurisdictional uh, uh, TV rights. And even now, I think they're getting smart. You've got Netflix and all these companies mm -hmm. that can go around that. So traditionally, VPNs are now being used to mask your identity or to secure a connection. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, and I have a news for people. So when you use a VPN, unless it's 256 uh, AES encryption, don't even bother. Also, when you change your location, your IP address, every time you change it, you're leaving yourself vulnerable even for a fraction of a second. And in the article, they describe that they get in through those kind of in-between phases where the VPN is vulnerable and open, they get in and then they get into the database. So, you know, we looked at doing a VPN ourselves. Uh, it was about 500 to $1,000 per user just in infrastructure costs. So when you look at VPN prices between three to $10 a month, they're all, I mean, 99% of them are on Amazon Web Service. And when you think about it, it's impossible for a regular company to have, you know, 300 different locations in the world. Only Google and Amazon can have that sort of infrastructure. So we looked at it, but we, don't, we didn't do a VPN because it was just too costly, people won't pay for it. We have a different technology uh, than VPN when it comes to protecting mm -hmm. our people. Now, is that the Helix technology? That's it. That's the Helix technology. So the concept of what we do is when we use a secure email or messenger, for example, and soon we're going to have the voice and video coming as well, you basically log into your account as a secure user. And let's say you want to email someone who's not a secure user. You would have to use a secure send feature. Um, so when you use secure send, essentially the recipient gets an email with a link and then they click and they, they, they can read your email. The same with our messaging application, you can message someone that doesn't have the app. So what do we do? Instead of emailing back and forth over the net and leaving that communication on the internet, on the open airwave, as I like to say, to use a radio term, uh, what we do is we first connect to our servers in Switzerland. That connection is the vulnerable part. So the Helix technology essentially uses the highest transfer of data encryption method out there. And we wrap it in multiple layers of our own encryption in a Helix format, and it multiplies by thousands of times the highest standard that you can get, which is 2048, 4096 bit. You know, people can wrap those around a lot. We multiply by thousands of times. We've done demos to government to show how it encrypts. We've had people test it. So once you connect to servers in Switzerland, in that multi-million dollar environment with heavy duty server, you're fully protected because that's when we encrypt. And then the other person also, when they click on your invitation link, they're in Switzerland. So the Helix technology protects your connection when you use secure. It's not a VPN. I mean, I would say there's maybe one or two VPN companies that I know that I would trust, and that's about it. And they still use big tech data because they don't have 300 location but at least they have the encryption so vpns are vulnerable 
it's just an illusion. I wouldn't put too much trust in them. Interesting. I remember I was looking at a website not too long ago and it said, um, it, it wouldn't allow me into it. And they said, well, you have to get a VPN. And I was like, oh, that sounds kind of complicated. <laughs> yeah, sure. it is complicated. Yeah, it's exactly. like a whole yeah. nother step. You're not sure what you're downloading on your computer. Um, and of course, as you mentioned, everything um, goes to Switzerland, which has uh, the tightest right protection laws in the world. Am I correct? Switzerland has the highest data protection laws in the globe. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, as you may or may not know, I'm sure you would, because it was famous for banking, it would be private for bankers from all over the world. You know, people would put their money and it would be private uh, away from prying eyes, uh, justified or not. And then after, I think as of 2018, there was a, the, the OECD, Organization of Economic uh, uh, Development Countries and Development, that basically signed an accord with about 120 countries to exchange financial info. So you don't have the financial privacy for non-Swiss citizen, but you do have the data privacy laws, which are part of our constitution, whereas the financial privacy laws were enacted in the 30s and it's not part of the constitution. So there's a, there's a slight difference there. And data privacy is massive. And now you have a lot of companies, these old bunkers that used to have like tanks and whatnot in the, you know, in the Cold War, now they house uh, data centers. There's you know, you either have gold bars in Switzerland in the mountain or data centers. And data <laughs> is a new gold, right? It sure it's is. a new gold, it's a new old, and it, it's just never ending. It's like, it's like gold forever, so to speak, right? Right, and it seems like it's the grease that makes the economy move uh, worldwide. It totally so. is. I mean, we're going to use some data to figure out who likes to have privacy and use secure mm -hmm. solution. Everybody uses data. What we do at Globex uh, with Secure is we want to make sure that you're not the guinea pig, so we never data mine you. Let other people do it, but at least you know that when you come to us, you're protected by the Swiss laws, by the fact that we don't use any big tech platform, the fact that we never data mine you, and we have our own proprietary tech as opposed to open source. So, and we're getting a ton of subscribers coming as well. Well, that's what I was just going to ask you about, because I know there's a big demand. People are just coming more aware, I think, of how their data is used and all the hacks. And you're having quite a bit of success as you've launched this new US campaign. So tell me about that. Yeah, actually, we, we just looked at our subscriber base. We got close to 3,000 subscribers in about a couple of months, which is pretty good when, we, when you're considering just testing. Now, these are paid subscribers. It's one thing to get free subscriber. It's another thing to get paid ones. It's a result of our campaign, our advertising campaign, our marketing campaign, our huge ad on the billboard on the NASDAQ, in the subways in New York, and other things that we're doing. We're going to increase this rate of adoption once we launch our brand new email application in Q1. And we're also launching business domain emails at the end of this year. So in Q1, we want to accelerate by a factor of two or three or more. And that's exactly where we say that once we uh, want to do our uplisting to NASDAQ, eventually the funds that will be used for, uh, for that we will take from these investment bankers is really going to be the fuel to increase and scale up dramatically. I mean, there's 1.6 billion emails that we can grab. So we want to get a piece of that 1.6 billion uh, Gmail users. So mm -hmm. that's there's quite a lot to do. So yeah. we're optimistic, we're excited. We've protected 3,000 people so far from being hacked through email and messenger. We're very proud of it and uh, we're going to continue. We get subscribers every day, 24 hours a day at all times of the day and night, people just come in. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen your ads. Uh, they're big in Times Square. So I know you're definitely breaking through. So um, anyway, yes. thank you so much, Alon, uh, for joining us again and look forward to getting some more updates. You've always got some interesting news to share. We're quite busy and there's always a new, it's a new day every day at Secure. So we're excited. Thanks, Jane, for having me on your show.